You're listening to That's a Freebie, the only podcast that mixes all the latest news from my little world with interesting stories from the rest of the world. I'm your host, Diggy, and as usual, I'm going to open up with an Ask a Freebie question. This is where I answer a question from all of you. This week's question, actually, though, isn't for me. No, it's not. It is from a friend of the show, Tom, and it says, I have a few questions for Seb regarding immortality. What are your terms and conditions, i.e. do I age? Will I watch all my loved ones and friends grow old and die? I need more details. Yeah. So if you remember, last week we had a question from Seb. um, And I've actually forgotten what the question from Seb was already. Let's go back. Let's go back in the show documents. It was Seb wrote, I really like your podtails. Mansa Musa was interesting. It got me thinking about what it would be like to bring him into today's society, and then I started thinking about immortality, and I thought about becoming immortal, and it became a thing that occupied my mind for a day. So my question is, if you could become immortal, would you? Really enjoying the show. Uh, You seem to have found your show format now. Seb. Oh, Seb. Tom wants to know what your terms and conditions of immortality are. And I've got to admit, I'm a little bit curious as well. So that is our question for you, Seb. Uh, please uh, feel free to write in. Uh, a couple of ways you could go ahead and do it. You could email hello at that's a freebie.com. You could use the form that you already used on the website. Uh, or you could join That's a Freebie Plus, which is how Tom submitted this question uh, via the Patreon. And uh, I hope, I, I look forward to hearing your response. Uh, Tom, it is worth just pointing out that. I can tell from the numbers of people that watch the show, there are people that are often several weeks behind. Uh, I find that the shows from about three or four weeks ago are the ones getting the most views now this week. So there could be a delay in the response because Tom might not be completely up to date on the episode yet. Uh, Not Tom, sorry. Seb might not be up to date on the episodes yet. Uh, So we will get a response uh, in due time, I'm sure, because Seb wouldn't let us down, would he? Uh, If you want to ask a question to open up the show, just go to that'safreebie.com. At the top of the page is an Ask a Freebie link. Uh, It'll take you to the form that you can fill in and ask a question. Just make sure you write on there if you don't want your question to be read out on air. And if you don't want your name to be read out, uh, just leave it blank. It's fine. Doesn't need uh, need a name in there to be completed. Uh, But for now, let's play the theme tune. Sit back. Relax, unless you're driving. It's time for That's a Freebie. Not really been a big week this week. It's been a fairly quiet week, actually. In fact, only two interesting things happened this week, and you could even argue that only one of them is interesting. The other one is semi-interesting, almost very almost became the subject of this week's buzz off, but I chose something else for that. After recording last week's episode, actually, I went to Sainsbury's and uh, I've mentioned this car park before. This is the, the car park of hell, uh, the one where it basically makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, there's an upper floor and a lower floor. The upper floor is always empty because nobody seems to remember it's there. So that means that the bottom floor is absolutely jammed all the time so i've started just always going to the upper floor uh so that's what i did goes to the upper floor parks up gets out the car goes walking towards the stairs to go down and there's a barrier blocking the stairs i thought that's a bit odd i could see it from far away if it was a sign i couldn't see what the sign was and it was closed for painting uh so they were they were painting the, the actual stairs believe it or not they were painting the concrete uh, no idea why it it didn't need it as far as I could tell previously, but hey, that's what they were doing. So I thought, ah, no problem. I'll go and get in the lift. It's a bit of a shoddy lift, but it's it's fine, right? Just two of them. Gets over. One of the lifts is broken. Brilliant. And the other lift is jammed open, so essentially broken as well. So the lifts are not working. So no lifts, no stairs. So I'm back to the stairs. And poked my head through, and I went, "Excuse me, um, are you, did you where are you up to? Like, can we use the stairs? Like, is there any chance I could just run down, or, or what?" Uh, and we were like, "Well, no, we're painting them." So I was, I was like, "Yep, yeah, fair enough, I get that." Just that the lifts are broken. Anyway, oh, I know they've been out of order for for a while. Then, 
So I'm like, well, why have you chosen to paint the stairs when the lifts are out of order? There isn't an alternative way up and down. And he went, oh, it's all right. You can walk up and down the ramp. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, fine. I'll walk up and down the ramp. Obviously, the signs on the ramp say, please do not walk up and down the ramp. And I'll be honest, that ramp is pretty deadly. I can't believe that they're getting people to walk up and down the ramp. So anyway, I walked down the ramp, right? Because it was either that or go and move my car and try and find a space on the bottom floor. And I weren't doing that. Gets back, only to find that on the way uh, back up the ramp, because the stairs were still closed and the elevator was still broken, somebody's coming down in a wheelchair really, really fast. They were zooming down that ramp. Uh, they'd obviously been told the same thing. Uh, I tried to run after them and, like, I don't know what I was thinking I was going to do, but they completely lost control of that wheelchair. They were extremely lucky that there were no cars coming out the bottom of that ramp for the, from the um, lower bay. Uh, I, 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 honestly, so lucky because there's always cars coming out, and it's a blind corner as well. They wouldn't have seen them. They ran, they hit the curb, they hit the fence, they bounced up out of the wheelchair and landed back down. Uh, so I ran back down the ramp, moved them to one side, and they were fine. They, they, we were like, you know, there were a few people who gathered right around by this point. They were saying, you know, we let's call you an ambulance. And they were like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. So anyway, I went on my way uh, because there was nothing much more I could do. And then I spent the rest of the afternoon thinking, how the hell did they get back up the ramp to get to the car? No idea. Yeah. So, yeah, it just left me thinking. And we'll never hear the end of that story now. We'll never know. And it's been driving me insane all week. I was even considering not telling it because of how much it's driving me insane. Uh, and I didn't want it to drive you a lot insane as well. But you know what? If I've got to suffer, you've got to suffer. That's how it goes. And the other story for this week... Um, I, I came home from work a few nights ago and, um, I, the first thing I do when I come home is I always head on over to the back of the room and I head to Goldie the Leopard Gecko's Vivarium uh, and say hi to my best friend Goldie. And he, he was doing this really weird thing where he was like pressed against the glass of his tank um now he does that he, he, they do this thing called glass surfing uh, it can mean a number of different things sometimes it just means they can't tell if it's a piece of glass there but he wasn't glass surfing he was just pressed against it as if he was walking on the glass now i don't know how many of you know much about leopard geckos but they're, they're not an animal that has sticky feet they they can't walk up things they can climb and uh contrary to what some people think they do like to climb i they they can get into some funny places but he was attached to the glass. I'm like, I don't know how he's stuck to the glass. So I sort of watched him for a little bit and he's, you know, his little head's wobbling about and I thought, well, he looks happy. Um, I'll get on my evening. And I went and put my bag away, took my shoes off, um, said hi to the rest of the family, you know, went upstairs, said night night to the kids because it was late and all that. And then I thought to myself, right, I'll go downstairs. I'll I might make myself a drink, I might make myself something to eat. So I goes into the kitchen, has a wander around the kitchen, did that thing you do where you forget what you walked into the room for. So I walked back out the kitchen and that's when I noticed that he was still in the exact same position. And I thought, this is really weird what he's doing here. I'm, I'm probably going to go and have a closer look at him, see if he's, uh, if he's having a bit of a midlife crisis or something. I mean, he's only a year old, so I hope not. Uh, anyway, I, I went over to the uh, vivarium and the, the, the lights were all off, so I hadn't really noticed before. Uh, but it turns out what he'd actually done is he'd decided to walk past one of his trees that was in the vivarium, and he uh, he got himself stuck between the tree and the glass. So the tree was pinning him to the window. Uh, well, not the window, to the to the glass front. Uh, so he was stuck. It, I, at first, I panicked a bit because his the, the way the tree is, it was like a branch and it was basically stabbing him in the back. And I was a bit worried that he'd actually got like impaled on it and he was in a serious like a bit of pain and potentially a bad condition. Anyway, when I, when I looked a little bit closer, he was he was just sort of wedged there. I don't know how long he'd been stuck there, but when I said to my wife, have you seen what he's doing? She said, yeah, we're doing that before. So he's been like that since they got home. And that will have been about four o'clock, I think. And this is, by this point, it's uh, quarter past nine at night. 
maybe a little bit later. So I was like, oh no, he's been stuck like this for ages then. Uh, so I went over and I went to open the vivarium so that I could help him get out. That's when I realized I couldn't. Because if I opened the, because it's 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 two pieces of glass, one of them at the back, one of them at the front, and they slide past one another. So if I'd have opened the one on the right, which is the one he was stuck to, it would have um, pushed him against the tree, which would probably have stabbed him. I think it, that would have killed him, unfortunately. Uh, but if I opened the other one, it would have pushed his legs and, and basically trapped his legs and his feet in between the two pines of uh, panes of glass. So I was a bit stuck on what I could do. Now, I could open the one on the left a little bit. So I had to slide it open. And then I had to, with one hand, sort of, I, I don't know how to describe it. I had to lift the glass and tilt it and then pull it out of position. So it actually, it basically, I detached it completely from the vivarium. And then I had to reach my arm around the back of, of his trees and pull the tree away from him. Uh, so that he fell on, it basically then fell onto the floor. Uh, it's the only way I could do it. And he landed on the floor and he stood there for a few minutes, not moving. He, the only way I could describe the look on his face and the, even his body language, actually, he looked very embarrassed. I think he realized what he'd done was a bit silly. And he went and, he went and crawled into his cave and poked his head out. And he was looking at me with the biggest look of shame on his face he's ever had. Uh, so I, I got him out and we, we had a, we had a little bit of a cuddle for a bit and he was fine after that. Th these things, honestly, they're, they're described as not having many brain cells and, I can see why sometimes. Uh, great pet to have, but honestly, not the brightest at all. This week's buzz off is something that came from a conversation I was having uh, with some friends earlier today, believe it or not. I hadn't actually got something for the buzz off section yet. And I had this conversation just absolutely solidified itself in my mind as, yep, that is the thing I'm going to talk about this week. Uh, and it's about supermarkets. It's not the supermarkets in general. It's the people that you go to the supermarket with. Now, this isn't aimed at anybody in particular. <clears throat> my wife, <clears throat> who definitely doesn't do this. Um, <laughs> and there are other people that do as well. Uh, in fact, it's something that most people probably do. Now, so if I go to the supermarket and I think to myself, right, I need bread and I need ham because I want to make sandwiches, right? I will go to the supermarket and I'll walk through the door and I'll turn left to go to the bread and then I'll walk down the rest of the aisle and grab the ham and then walk to the till because that's what I went into the supermarket to buy. Nothing else, that's what I went to get, right? My wife, on the other hand, uh, and again, like I say, other people, my wife is just a great example because it's somebody who I see do this often, and it is a joke that we have. Um, she will say, right, I, all I need to get is some bread. I'm like, brilliant. She'll walk in the supermarket and immediately start walking down the first aisle of the supermarket when the bread's on the last aisle, and you can, you can just cut across and get there. And I'll go, well, where, where are you going? She's like, to get some bread. I'm like, but it's that way. She's like, yeah, but I... I don't go right to the bread. I've got to walk up and down the aisles first. And she will then proceed to walk up and down every single aisle and then be shocked when she comes out with a basket full of shopping. Yeah, I don't know. It's a thing we do, right? I do it as well. I, I, I'm not immune to it. I, I, I tend to do it if I go to Asda. I don't know why. The specific Asda, when I go there, because I have to walk past every aisle to get to where I need to go, I can't help but go up and down them. And I start coming out with stuff that I don't need, like chocolate. Mostly, yeah, mostly chocolate. Anyway, yeah, uh, supermarkets in general can buzz off. For this week's pod tales, I wanted to explore uh, the world of the idiom. What is an idiom, you might ask? An idiom is a quirky and colourful expression that doesn't mean exactly what the words say. It's like um, a little puzzle where the whole phrase is the whole meaning. Uh, for example, when someone says it's raining cats and dogs, they don't actually mean it's raining cats and dogs from the sky. They just mean it's raining really, really hard. You've probably all heard idioms uh, from from people that you know. Uh, you probably say some yourself. Uh, there's some really common ones out there. And I just I was really interested in them, and I wanted to see where some of them came from. And this wasn't even to do with podcast research. Uh, I just wanted to know where some of them came from. There was there were some that 
a uh, few people at work mentioned quite often. I was like, I wonder where that actually does originate. And so, as you can imagine, there's tons of them. So what I've done, I've picked out some of the most common ones. Uh, and today we're going to look at the meaning and the origin of 10 of them. So number one is hit the nail on the head. Uh, you can probably gather this one quite easily. The, the meaning is to describe exactly what is causing a situation or problem. You know, you've hit the nail on the head with that one. Uh, the origin uh, of this one is it comes from carpentry, where hitting the nail squarely on the head is the most effective way to drive it into a surface. Yeah, that one makes sense, right? Number two, piece of cake. It means something is easy to do. Uh, this originated in the 19th century when cakes were given as prizes for easy competitions. Yeah, there you go. That one actually makes a little bit more sense now. Uh, number three, let the cat out of the bag. Uh, and it, it means to reveal a secret, uh, often unintentionally, uh, which, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and the origin uh, is that it comes from uh, medieval markets where cats were often sold, uh, sometimes instead of piglets. Now, what they would do is they would put piglets inside essentially sacks what what they do then is they'd weigh the sacks or they'd probably handball it really they'd hold the sacks and go oh that piglet's heavier than that piglet so I'll, i can pay more for, you know that one costs more kind of thing but what some um marketeers would do is they would put uh cats in the bags instead sometimes maybe even a couple uh to make them way more and every now and then the cats would escape the bags and the cat would be out of the bag thus that's where the cat is out of the bag comes in. Uh, number four, costs an arm and a leg. Means it's very expensive. Uh, this phrase likely comes from the high cost of commissioning full-length portraits in the 18th century, which often depicted the arms and legs prominently. Uh, so naturally, it costs more. Break a leg. Uh, means good luck, especially before a performance. Uh, this one is from the theatre, uh, where wishing someone good luck was often considered bad luck, so they used to say break a leg instead. Number six is bite the bullet, uh, which means to face a difficult or unpleasant situation uh, with courage. Uh, I didn't know about the with courage part. I've, I've never really thought of it as that but yeah i suppose you do you go right i'm just gonna have to bite the bullet on this one and you just go ahead in and get on with it uh this phrase comes from soldiers biting on bullets uh to cope with pain during surgery wow i um i had no idea that that's where it came from uh number seven uh once in a blue moon uh this means that something rarely happens uh and that's because a blue moon is an extra full moon that appears on a calendar year uh which is a really really rare event uh, so, yeah, once in a blue moon. Very, very rare. Uh, the ball is in your court. This one actually is different to what I always thought. Um, it means it's your turn to take action or make a decision. And the phrase comes from tennis, meaning it's your turn to respond. I always assumed it was a basketball uh, idiom. I mean, maybe it could be. Um, I, I, I did quite a bit of research on these, but, you know, there was always multiple answers to some of them. I tend to tended to go with the ones that were more frequent. Uh, number nine is speak of the devil, uh, which means when someone you were talking about appears unexpectedly. This phrase is actually short for speak of the devil and he will appear, originated in the Middle Ages as a superstition. And number 10, uh, my favourite one is a blessing in disguise. Uh, something that seems bad or unlucky at first, but results in something good. Uh, now, this one dates back to the 1740s, uh, and it suggests that a seemingly unfortunate event can actually be beneficial. Fun fact, that is the one that actually made me start uh, looking up uh, idioms because one of my work friends uh, used to think the term was blessing in disguise, as in um, God was looking down on you and blessing you, which I can't blame her for. That's also one of the... Uh, uh, origin stories of it for because apparently some people do say blessing in the skies so it turns out you were not wrong uh it does actually exist it's just that they're used interchangeably handy to know right um that is actually going to be the part first of a three-parter because uh, i really enjoyed looking at the idioms so i'm going to do 10 more next week and 10 more the week after uh, because why not it's my podcast and i can do whatever i want
If you love That's a Freebie and you want even more, you can now subscribe to That's a Freebie Plus. Just head on over to that'safreebie.com and click on the Get Plus Here link at the top of the page. Uh, and you will get access to the Unpolished feed, which is a raw, unedited recording of the show. And I send it out immediately after it's recorded. You get to hear all the times I mess up. You get to hear the pre-show. You get to hear the after show. You get all the uncut bits in there as well. And you support the show. I couldn't remember what I was going to say then. Um, and supporting the show is obviously brilliant because it means that I get to keep doing this for as long as I can. Uh, if you can't or you don't want to join Plus, that is okay. I will still continue to make the podcast. I actually find it very good therapy making this podcast. So I will be doing that for as long as I can. But you can still help uh, by sharing it with people and leaving a rating in your favorite podcast client. So please go ahead and do that. The pick of the week for this week is actually um, a video recording, streaming, uh, sharing platform. Actually, I don't know if I call it a platform, actually, thinking about it. A platform will be something like YouTube. No, this is Ecamm Live. Uh, if you listen to any podcasts, you've probably heard of Ecamm Live before. Uh, this is not an ad. Uh, I realize that Ecamm is actually quite prevalent with ads at the moment. And that's actually what got me using it in the first place. I use it to record this podcast. And since doing so, it's gotten so much easier. I can add the sound effects in as I'm recording. I don't have to worry about adding them later. I can uh, I can record the audio from my computer at the same time as the audio from my microphone, which you would think would be dead easy, but it turns out there's a lot involved in doing that. Uh, it's not as easy as you would think. So uh, Ecamm Live is my pick for this week and it is what makes that's a freebie possible so do head on over and have a look at it if you've got any recording needs now you might recall last week i asked the question how did you manage your lesson schedule uh, when you were in high school and how did you know where to be uh, the reason I asked this is I wanted to ask another question related uh, to school because I'd I'd done that previously uh, in the in the previous few episodes and I was just thinking back about when I was at school the kind of things that I had difficulty with or that uh, I just wasn't very good at and I was both absolutely terrible at managing my schedule and also really really amazing at the same time I'll elaborate so. What we used to do, so for the first, I think, three years of high school, we used to, on the first day of term after the summer holidays, you would spend the first hour to two hours in your um, form room, it was called. So that was like your the, the, the room you went to every morning to do register, and then you went off to do your different lessons throughout the day and never saw that room again. But it was still classed as your main room because you had a form teacher, and that teacher is the, the like your... I suppose when you think about it, when you relate it to work, it's like your line manager. Um, now that I think about it, you had a teacher designated to you that that was your go-to teacher if you had a need of some kind. So we would sit in the farm room and the teacher would basically read out starting from 9 a.m. on a Monday morning, the lessons for that week. And they would say, 9 a.m. Monday, AFS. And then they'd list the names of all the people that were in that class. And then they'd go, 10 a.m. English. And then they'd list all the names of the people that were in that class. And you basically, what you had to do, you had to sit there and listen for your name to be read out and then write it down on a little timetable. And then you carried this piece of paper uh, with you for the entire year uh, to guide you on where you should be. Now, it was a piece of paper that you had to unfold and refold about six times a day and then just keep in your pocket. So that lasted me about three days because it was ruined. I'd scribbled more notes on it or it just unfolded and folded that many times and it fell apart. Uh, I'm, pro I'm pretty sure I probably washed one at one point because it was left in my blazer. And I just, I don't know how people did it, but there were people at the end of the year still had this piece of paper and it was in perfect condition. Now, looking back now, what they probably did is instead of just stuffing it in the pocket, they had a very specific place where they put it in the bag. Or 
They might have made multiple copies of it just in case. Not me, though. I was an idiot. I, um, I just used to lose it. But somehow, and to this day, I don't know how, I always made it on time for my lessons and I was always in the right place. I just knew where I was supposed to be. Like, I, sometimes, I, I've, I remember doing this, I would, I, I would know that after PE, I always had English. Uh, so I would get ready for PE and I'd make sure that I was ready in time to follow somebody else who I knew was in my English class or something like that. Or there'd be, there'd be a few people that were in the same classes of me regular, so I would ask them what they had next. And if it was a lesson that I knew I was in them with, I'd just follow them. And if it was a lesson I knew I wasn't with, with them with, I'd go and find somebody else and just find out where I'm supposed to be. And it was just pure luck that I never got in trouble because I didn't know where I was. I do remember one time I had to go to the office. This has just popped into my head. So I came out of a lesson and I had absolutely no clue where I was supposed to be, like no idea whatsoever. And the halls were empty. I must have gotten out late or something like that. And I remember thinking, no, I have no idea. So I remember running through the school to get to the office at the front of the school. And it was a big school, right? Um, the school I was in, it took you, it could take you some time. If you had to go from one side of the school to the other, it would take about 15 minutes. And that that's no joke. That's no exaggeration. It took bloody ages. So I'd get to the other side of the school. I got to the office and I remember waiting at the office and there was nobody there. Uh, so I stood there and I'm, I'm panicking more and more by the minute. I could see the clock. I was like 20 minutes late for my lesson. Then the, the receptionist t turned up. She went, how can I help you there? And I just, I remember looking at her and going, I don't know where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> she went, what? I was like, I, I haven't got a timetable. So I don't know where I'm supposed to be. And she, she's like, what's your name? So there was hundreds of kids. I wouldn't have expected her to know my name. She's like, what's your name? And, uh, I said, um, I'll give her my name. And she, um, and I remember she turned around, pulled open a drawer, went B -b 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 through the files and pulled out a pristine copy of a printed out timetable that was my timetable. And, and she handed it to me and she went, try not to lose it. But if you do, I can get you another one. And this was like, this was in almost my last year of high school. And I remember thinking, why the f*** do you not give us this at the start of the year? It was unbelievable. Like, all that time, they'd had them in a drawer. But no, we had to sit there writing the things out. Anyway, uh, I've got another question for you this week. I'm going to move away from school because I think I've exhausted that uh, pool of content. Uh, might come back to it sometime if I remember something else from there. But for now, my question is, are you a backseat driver? Thank you very much for listening to That's a Freebie. You can find the show at That's a Freebie podcast on almost all social media, except for X, which is just That's a Freebie. And you can find me as Hey It's Diggy on all social media. I will see you next time. Have a wonderful week.